from the Dogfish Head Brewery, Sam Calagione. It's been a long, strange, but wonderful trip. From the Boston Beer Company, Jim Cook. Welcome back to the Friday Beer Buzz, Jim. Well, it's nice to be back. Uh, we are normally from Aberdeenshire in Scotland. From Brew Dog, we have James Watt and Martin Dickey. Welcome to the show, guys. The biggest mission today is just to make other people passionate about your state craft beers as we are. And now, the three time winner of the Pennsylvania Association of Broadcasters Excellence in Broadcasting Award. The recipient of two Pennsylvania Associated Press Broadcasters Association Awards for Excellence. Promoting and advancing the craft and microbrew culture in Northeast PA. This is another edition of... The, the Friday, Friday Beer Buzz! And the Friday Beer Buzz, powered by Sabatini's Pizza and Sabatini's Bottle Shop and Bar in Exeter. Sabatini's, the area's greatest selection of rare craft and imported beers. Growlers and crowlers and 37 rotating drafts. At Sabatini's Pizza and Sabatini's Bottle Shop and Bar, Wyoming Avenue in Exeter. We got Bill from my beer buzz on the phone. Hi, Bill. Happy Friday from the past. <laughs> oh, he's going to tell us about the great beers to come. Or, or No, wait, you're in the past. Let's hear some old-fashioned beer news. I want to hear about what they're doing <laughs> over in St. Louis, Missouri. Crazy, crazy. I um, think there's so... There's so much lag on my phone, I feel like I'm in the past. Yeah, no, that's true, that's true. Sorry about that. One day we'll all be together again. Um, but we have Lindo yeah. from Sabatini's uh, with us. Hi, Lindo. Hello. Hello. Is it still 37 rotating drafts? I know it changes all the time. Like, it gets more and more and more. Are we I okay? think that's accurate. Yeah. Okay. Um, anyway, so uh, we were just talking about traveling uh, past or forward. If people are wondering why, um, you know, that's what we were discussing. It was a poll. So, Bill, would you rather go into the future or the past or neither? So, uh, I love, I was telling Johnny Lucas, I love high tech, so I think it would be fun to jump forward in the future. But as altruistic as I would love to be and with Lindo's idea with the virus, I think I would probably just go back 10 years to the $1 billion lottery, knowing the numbers and, and oof, you know. <laughs> take care of a lot of problems at once, right? Yeah, yeah. I could cure the virus maybe with a billion dollars anyway. But then, you, but then you go to collect it and they're like, so where are you from again? And like, you don't have an accurate, you don't have, a, you don't have the ID. Yeah, and it's like, all, you imagine winning that and having to turn it down like this is like, yeah, I just should have, didn't have ID. No, I, see, he would be, Bill's very particular. He would yeah. have all that stuff set up. That's right. That, or you could go into the future and figure out what the next TikTok app is going to be and then come back and invent it ahead of everyone. Ah, uh, that's a good one, too. All right. Yeah, so yeah, talk I'm, beer news I'm because, sure you have beer news. So. Yeah, I, could, I could listen <laughs> to this all day. It's fascinating. <laughs> We do. We have some beer news, and, and you know, we, we always talk about buyouts, and we never talk about buyouts fondly because it's usually big beer buying small beer. But I have one today that I think we will, uh, we will all consider to be good news. Deschutes, uh, Bend, Oregon, one of our favorites. We have their brewmaster, Ben Keyes, on with us. Um, he was one of the few people that Brew Dog, when they did their Brew Dogs TV show, said they really loved him and really enjoyed him. Deschutes is partnering, there's your, your word in quotes, with Boneyard Beer, and uh, they will retain separate identities. They will have shared resources, and, and it's another example of a craft brewery buying out or helping or supporting another craft brewery. Uh, Boneyard Beer, I think, has been struggling a little bit, and, and they share roots. You know, they share common roots in Bend, Oregon, um, and I, th I think actually the founder of Boneyard used to work for Deschutes. So we're happy to see that Deschutes is joining forces with Boneyard Beer and it sounds like, other than it being a good resource thing for both of them, nothing will change. There will still be Boneyard, and obviously there will still be the shoot. So that's very good news. We also have some good news coming from Bells. And Bells has released their 2021 release calendar, which are actually a little bit late. Uh, you know, obviously we're in the third month of 2021, so they're playing a little catch-up. But uh, highlights of that are that there will be a flavored wheat ale in August. There will be a low-calorie wheat ale in December. Figure that out. You know, the holidays, are everybody's frivolous and partying. And now right. Bells is coming out with a, a low-cal wheat. Uh, Double Two-Hearted Ale will return in August, so that's exciting news for me. There will be multiple Oberon variants, uh, the first one coming in June and four different Flamingo Fruit Flight variants. Go ahead and say that three times. <laughs> you did well. <laughs> um, here's one to be very careful with. 
Stone is coming up with something called Imperial Star, and I'll just spell it, F-A-W-K-E-R. Um, F-A-W. And so that... Ah. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. So if you that, say it like Gawker, <laughs> if you say it like Gawker, it works fine. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm, and I'm not, it's too early in the morning. I'm not even going to try because I know how it will come out. Um, but it's a hazy IPA. It's coming in June. It's coming from actually the Stone Napa Valley facility. Uh, it will be brewed with Citra and Raku hops, and it will come in at 9% ABV in 22-ounce bottles and 12-ounce cans. Uh, we have two additional pieces here that I think are really, really interesting. The first one comes to us from La Trappe. And we know La Trappe as a Trappist brewery, uh, and, and they're one of the decreasing number of Trappist breweries. But they're doing something I've never seen a Trappist brewery do. They are doing a collaboration, and, and if you want to uh, insert the what kind of sound effect here, <laughs> they're, <can> doing, do <laughs> they're doing a collaboration with BrewDog. What? What? <laughs> and, and, Thought I'd you know, be with you everybody have, on that. Have, <laughs> You're alone. You have the <laughs> you have the very reverent, you know, monastic brewing teaming up with the most irreverent brewery in the world, Brew Dog, to brew something called Practice What You Preach. And practice is spelled with an S. I just think that's their their spelling of an Eng Englishized word here. Um, but it's going to be an ale brewed with Scottish heather honey and U.S. grown hops. And it comes out of, it's 10% beer, but it comes out of their desire for both breweries to leave the world better than they found it. And if you really follow closely with Brew Dog, they really are doing that. They are giving back. They gave the entire U.K. Uh, a free can of beer during COVID. They, they're solar powered. They're carbon neutral. They're putting back trees. They're, they're, they're very, for an irreverent brewery, um, they're very that's cool. future thinking. Yeah, that's and, cool. And our last, our last little tidbit comes out of Firestone Walker. It seems like they're in the news every week now. They have a series of beer called Brewmasters Collective, and they're coming out with something called Waukesha Press 2021, and it will be a bourbon barrel aged blended, again, there we go, blended beer with lemon peel, and that comes in at 10.2% ABV, and we will see that in 12-ounce bottles. So that's another Firestone Walker blended beer um, that we've been talking about over the last couple of weeks uh, coming to our markets hopefully soon. Linda Offshore cool. will let us know when that's coming. Sure will. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> the practice what you preach is actually pre-ordered, and we should be receiving that sooner than later. Oh, good. Yeah, that's, that's another one that falls into that Scottish heather honey. I'm sure it tastes like honey. You know, when you put heather in there, I start to taste uh, a perfume and, mm -hmm. and spice cabinet. But I think it would probably just be a, a, a slightly sweeter uh, U.S. hop version. So I think that would be cool. That is awesome. So that we, is super cool. We have a beer today. And it, it's a, a brewery that I'm surprised we have not featured because they've been around for quite a while. Um, they come to us from Middleburg Heights in Ohio, uh, as well as several other places in Ohio, in now Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's the Fat Heads Brewery. And not to be confused with the big, giant stand-up cutout of people that you take to your wall. Right. Uh, they, they've, been around, <laughs> they've been around quite a while, and our beer today is called Bumbleberry, and it is a honey blueberry ale. Ooh. I'm not sure so what it says right about me. This is that. delicious. This is my favorite one you've ever brought in. I was thinking. Really? I was thinking of you when I selected. He's this. surprised. He's like, Bill's I, like, really? It, it, I, 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 I wanted to interrupt beer news to tell you. I'm like, wow, that's really, really good. Yeah. Well, you're you're early in the process, Jason. You. I don't know how many weeks we we've been on together, but um, but that that definitely tells me something about your beer preferences and your beer flavor preferences. It would tell me you lean toward a slightly sweeter beer. This one is 13 IBU, and IBU is International Bittering Unit, and a high number means it's really hoppy and bitter, and a low number can mean it's sour or acidic, and then that sort of slightly low number, like 13, would mean it's a sweeter beer. Uh, yeah. And of course, when you put fruit, you know, you got blueberry in this one, and you've got freshly, uh, this is in quotes as well, freshly harvested spring honey 
um, it, it, it makes for a slightly sweeter combination. And of course, uh, it has hops. It has sterling hops only in it. And they do that to balance it out because if you make it too sweet, it'll get cloy and hard to drink. And if you make it too bitter, Jason won't like it. <laughs> I, I, I'm getting, it's you, not I, too sweet. From a, like a sampling point of view, I'll pretty much try anything at this point. I, I like just seeing kind of where the flavors hit in the mouth. And this one, this was good because it was usually what I would expect the blueberry or those flavors to be at the aftertaste were right up front. And that was kind of neat. Right. Well, we got uh, received probably seven or eight different beers from Fatheads this week since they're just rolling out into the market. They've never been available in Pennsylvania before. So we got them all in. We got mostly all IPAs. And I'm thinking, all right, I could bring an IPA into the studio, but yeah. then I have to look at Barsky's face go sideways. <laughs> so I, I, think, I think I'm going to bring uh, Bumblebury in, and that's the one I chose. And it, this, a lot of people have been asking for this beer. Quick story about Fatheads. Yeah. It was 2015 or 16 when I went out to the Great American Beer Festival in, in Colorado. They were there full force, and that was the year that they won maybe 10, 15 gold medals at the GABF, right. which is huge. Right. And every single time they would call their name, like 15 guys would have to get out of their seats, walk down to the stage, get around Charlie Papazi and take the picture. <laughs> and it was just it was just like, wow, I can't wait for these beers because they're winning every gold medal. And the beers the beers speak for themselves. Beers are fantastic. That's yeah, awesome. it's really good. Now, is that Charlie guy mentioned? Is that Fathead himself? No, Charlie Papazian is like the master the master of the homebrew world. Oh, that, okay, you gotcha. Know, so he, he I saw it's, it's, fat, host. it's Fatheads. It's apostrophe S in head. So I'm like, oh, it must be Fathead, his brewery. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Is that, I thought that might be the guy. They're just so. very clever, all these uh, names. I, lo I love this one. That's really good. He likes it, but even it though... actually started... I was just going to say, even though he likes this type, I mean, IPAs are really what a lot of people like. I mean, oh, isn't yeah. that what's the most popular oh, of, uh, kind of... Of, of course. I just, Please challenge me. I just, uh, <laughs> no, he's trying to, like, ease you I, in. I'm, bring, I'm bringing you in slow. I don't want I don't want to give you... I don't want to give you a shock here. Yeah, I've tried really different is. things. I just... I, I'm starting to learn how to appreciate it. That's 100% sincere. I don't like everything, but this is really good. I ne like this one. In. Next week is a big West Coast IPA. Okay, okay so next week All he's right. really going to challenge you. I'm ready. And, and we'll see. I'm sure at Sabatini's we're going to see a lot of hoppy beers from Fatheads. I know that they are bringing in a bunch of stuff. My prediction for you, Jason, yeah. uh, for the beer that you're going to love, and we will feature it, I'm sure, on the show because it is available. The beer you're going to love the most, at least of everything we've done up to that point, will be Rogue Double Chocolate Stout. And that's just my prediction. Join it out there so that when you travel into the future, you'll know why. <laughs> when I first turned 21, and I always found this fascinating, I don't know the answer, but when I, I turned 21, I'd go to bars. For some reason, every bar in Jersey had Yingling Black and Tan on tap. Ooh. They did, yeah. I can't find a tap here, yeah. in most, but that was my favorite. That was my go-to. I drank that exclusively, right. which is a weird, like I said, a so deal. I never did. Half, that's half stout. So, yeah, I think my prediction will come you might through. Be right. I think my you're right. Thing, my my uh, memory of, of Fatheads is that when Trogues moved from Harrisburg to Hershey, they retired their old brewing system, and they built this fabulous brewery that we visited together in Hershey, but their old brewing system went to Fatheads. Um, Fatheads was started in 1992 by Matt Cole and Glenn Benigni. There's a name that you got to say. Uh, and like I said, they now have three or four facilities in Ohio and a new facility in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Ooh. Very cool. So this is obviously available at Sabatini's. Yep. And you have other Fatheads, too, you said. Yeah, a bunch of, bunch of really nice IPAs from them as well. So just stop in, and if for some reason you can't remember the name, Fatheads Breweries, uh, Bumbleberry Ale, just say, you know, it's the one that was on the Friday Beer Buzz, they know what it is. The one that Barsky liked. <laughs> Jason Barsky liked. All right, we've been drinking <laughs> Fatheads Brewery Bumbe Bumbleberry Ale, which, uh, you know, Jason Barsky likes as well. I do, it's good. Uh, and it's all brought to you here on the Friday Beer Buzz by Sabatini's Pizza in Sabatini's Bottle Shop and Bar in Exeter. Sabatini's has the area's greatest selection of rare craft and imported beers. Growlers and Crowlers and 37 rotating drafts at Sabatini's Pizza and Sabatini's Bottle Shop and Bar. Wyoming Avenue in Exeter. Bye, Bill. Bye, Lindo. Have a good weekend. Hi, guys. I'm going to keep chugging this The stuff. Friday Beer Buzz, bringing good beers and good people together.